What's going on, everyone? Scott here. Welcome back to the channel. So Michigan State football closes out the regular season against Rutgers at 3.30 on FS1 in Spartan Stadium on Saturday, a game in which Michigan State sits at 5-6. and six. You need six wins to get to a bowl game, so there's something to play for in what will be a very cold Spartan Stadium on Saturday. We're going to go over what we can expect from Rutgers, what we'd like to see Michigan State improve on and do in this game in order to come out and secure a bowl bid. And then, of course, for the last time in the regular season, our Week 14 college football bets. Before we do jump in, though, if you could, just hit that like and subscribe button down there. More Michigan State content on the channel. We're obviously finishing up football season right here. Hopefully you get this win, get a bowl game. After the season, though, we'll have a full deep dive into the season, what we need to see in the offseason, recruiting, recruiting, transfer portal-wise, and you know, going forward from there. But obviously, basketball season just came off a big-time win to secure a 2-in-1 Maui Invitational trip and you know, coming into Big Ten play next week. So a bunch of other Michigan State stuff on the channel. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a video. So jumping into Rutgers, 6-5 and five on the season, so already bowl eligible. Going into some of their personnel at quarterback, not super efficient. Ethan Calicamanis, I, I know I said that wrong, I apologize, but about 55% completion percentage, just over 2,300 yards on the year, 16 to 6 touchdown to interception ratio, and has been sacked 16 times on the year, former Minnesota transfer, but they do have a potent running attack with senior running back Kyle Manungai. Over 1,100 yards on the year with a 5.1 average and 12 touchdowns. Receiving game is okay. Damari Miller, 53 catches for 683 yards and 4 touchdowns. Ian Strong adding in 33 catches for 508 yards and 4 touchdowns. Defensively, linebacker Daryl Dejbaum. I, I know I said that wrong. Again, I apologize. A lot of hard names on this roster, it looks like. Um, is leading the way with 95 tackles for Rutgers on defense. Two sacks as well with two forced fumbles. On the defensive line, looking out for uh, defensive line, Keontae Hamilton leads the way with three and a half sacks. Aaron Lewis and Jordan Walker on the defensive line has three as well. In the secondary, Shaquan Loyal leading the way with two interceptions and a handful of guys with one interception on the year. Um, touching on special teams, too, uh, nine for 13 on field goals on the year and has missed an extra point. Overall, as a team, scoring about 28 points per game this year, about 42% on third down, forcing the third, fourth down, about 42% there on third down. Net average punt, 37.2. Could be a factor in this game. A lot of punts, I believe. I believe this is going to be a low-scoring game. We'll, we'll talk about it more in our bets for this week, but over-under is at 47.5 right now, so... Uh, I, <sighs> Spoiler alert, I think the under might hit in this one. But jumping over to MSU, we said we thought this would have to be another ground game. We said that kind of a little bit after last week in the recap, and I believe it will be. And I believe Aiden Childs will need to make some plays with his legs on the ground as well. I mean, as of right now, it's supposed to be like 28, 29 degrees in there, and I don't know what the wind's going to look like, but I'm assuming there'll be some wind because why wouldn't there be? So going to need the running backs, Karon Lynch Adams, Nate Carter, and most importantly, I think Aiden Childs out of the backfield from the quarterback position, running the ball, making plays with his legs. Rutgers, historically, I'd say, is solid in the run game. They're ranked 74th this year in run defense, kind of middle of the pack a little bit, giving up about 4.9 uh, yards per carry average and about 151 per game. But for Michigan State, could the red zone struggles continue? Well, Rutgers is tied for 32nd in red zone defense. However, Michigan State did score all three touchdowns last week against Purdue in the red zone. So maybe our Jonathan Smith and Michigan State's offense starting to figure some stuff out in the red zone and making some progress, which we talked about all season. I, I think there has been some progress from this group. The thing is, they've improved on some things. For, you know, if you look at the whole season, kind of. There was a handful of stuff, a lot of stuff that you needed to improve on. In some games, we've seen like, let's just, for example, say there's like five things you want the Michigan State offense to improve on. One game, they'll improve on like two of the things, but then two of the other things might take a drop or one, a deep drop. And then, you know, it, you kind of you kind of get the picture I'm talking about here. It hasn't been a clean across the sheet game. Closest one was probably Iowa. That was probably the best overall game of the season for Michigan State. But so would like to see that portion of Michigan State's game continue in the right direction after last week. Obviously a different opponent than Purdue. Rutgers is a little more potent than Purdue, especially on defense, but just as a whole. 
Um, Jonathan Smith did say that none of the guys in the secondary that have been injured the last couple weeks are expected to be back. We'll see if they make a bowl game. I think there's a potential some of the guys, from what it sounds like, could be back, but to be determined. So overall, you're going to have a lot of young guys back there and experienced guys. You know, I mean, they've kind of got thrown into the fire the last couple weeks and have gotten some experience there. So that could be something to definitely watch out for on Saturday afternoon in Spartan Stadium. Look, overall, for Michigan State, kind of already mentioned it, but just want to see a clean game for Michigan State. No turnovers, no interceptions. You know, really dating back to the bye week, there's only been three interceptions from Aiden Childs, and two of them came in the game against Indiana, which is obviously a really good team this year. Fairly good team, I would say. They handled those pretty well. They're a good team, good defense. Two of those interceptions came in that game. Then another one against a tough Iowa defense, in which we just said was Michigan State's best performance of the year, and it was. But clean sheet. Run the ball effectively. Get Nick Marsh the ball eight plus times. I, last week he only got the ball, I think, two times. I believe it was for like twenty something yards, something like that. So, as I've said multiple times over the last couple weeks and a good amount of the season, Nick Marsh needs the ball in his hands any which way. Passing the ball, jet sweeps, however you get him the ball eight plus times this game. Uh, stop the run like you have been doing. Twenty eight this year, Michigan State is in rush defense. And let's send the seniors outright in Spartan Stadium and make a bowl game. Words can't describe what a bowl game would do for this team and the morale of the program, both internally. I mean, two years without a bowl game, three of the last four years, aside from the 2021 season, optically from a national perspective for recruiting wise, and which isn't great right now, but still time to salvage things here. We'll get more into recruiting once you know, the regular season officially ends. Hopefully we're talking about a bowl game, but we'll talk a little bit more about recruiting in the next couple weeks as we head to, you know, uh, early signing day here coming up in a couple weeks. But still time to salvage this recruiting thing, but it's there's not much time. It's 11.45 and the paper's due in 14 minutes at 11.59. So yeah, I think a bowl game would go a long way, you know, Yes, for this class too, but just as a whole to get Jonathan Smith's tenure here at Michigan State off right and, you know, just get some good vibes going into spring next year, summer, and into next season as well. Bowl game will definitely go a long way. So let's jump into our week 14, crazy week 14 college football bets. Went two and three last week. Um, 23 and 33 on the year. So look, we want to go 500 on the year. We want to go above 500. So I chose 11 games here. If we go 11 and 0, we're above 500 on the year. Success, if we get 10 of them, we're at 500, solid, whatever. If not, then we're under 500 for our first football season doing this. But we're going to give it a whirl and let's jump in. First off, as always, starting off with our game, Michigan State versus Rutgers. Already kind of hinted at it, taking under 47.5 at minus 105. Next up, Ohio State versus that school down the road, Michigan, over 43.5. I still think that's a pretty low over under 43.5. Got that at minus 114. Clemson minus 2.5 versus South Carolina at minus 114. UConn minus 10.5 at UMass minus 110. Notre Dame minus 7.5 at USC for minus 104. Miami minus 10.5 at Syracuse minus 115. Arizona State minus 8.5 at Arizona at minus 114. Missouri minus 3.5 versus Arkansas plus 100. Auburn plus 11.5 at Alabama minus 112. Then Washington plus 18.5 at Oregon for minus 106. And lastly, Texas minus 5.5 at Texas A&M minus 102. That's a lot. That's an 11 leg parlay, but that is plus $126,741. $5 wins you $6,337.08. Let's go 11 0. Get over 500 for the year. Secure that up. But anyway, we'll be back later this weekend to recap this game. Talk about are we going to a bowl game? And what not, if we end up not going to a bowl game, then we'll be back. Recap this game, then we'll probably be back sometime next week to recap the, the regular season. And whether we make a bowl game or not, we probably will do something like, like that. Um, either if we do make a bowl game, after the bowl game. Uh, if not, then probably sometime next week. But anyway, that'll do it for this one. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out.